All right, welcome to another episode of Rotors on our how-to videos. This is our advanced how-to, and today we're gonna show you a teardown of a 1993 Mazda RX-7 REW short block. Now this is an N3A1, and it came out of a 93 base model. We're gonna start by taking the hub bolt out and get the hub out. Um, these can stick, sometimes they're hard to get out. We used an air impact. Sometimes an air impact can't even get them. You do have to heat them up. You can use map gas, propane torch. Um, in this case, you know, we're, we're pretty we're pretty cool dudes. We should be able to get this by hand. The rest of you can't. I'm not sure what to tell you. Done. Um, this is an Atkins rotary thermal pellet. This motor's obviously been gone through. If you're doing this for the first time to an engine that has been broken down, your thermal pellet's gonna look different. It's gonna look copper, or brass, and it's gonna have a spring hooked onto it. In our case, this is an aftermarket option. Now, as we pull the hub off, what we're looking for is a ring or a groove that the seal will cause on a high mileage hub. Um, in this case, it's pretty flush. This is, this is good, reusable. And then before you even flip the motor over, go from there, pull your thermal pellet spring out. So when you tilt the engine around, this won't fall down in your oil pan or bounce off the ground. You, you need this. All right, now we're getting ready to take off the front cover, 12 millimeter. Um, these shouldn't be on there super tight. You can get it by ratchet. In our case, we're using a 3 8 electric impact with a 12 millimeter socket. Now before you get to this last one here, you're gonna to need to take a 10 millimeter and you're gonna to need to take off the front turbo oil return line. Okay, as we pop this up, put a screwdriver under here. There's a flat circle where you can wedge a screwdriver in and you can just easily pop this up. Now when you pop this up and take it off, I like to keep it as horizontal as I can to keep all the bolts in their specific spot because these are a certain length and they go back into their spot. Now on the oil pump gear, this washer here is notched to hold this bolt from backtracking while the engine is spinning. We need to knock this lip down so we can get to the net. Seventeen millimeter electric impact. Now we're gonna pull up the oil metering pump drive gear. Be careful when you take this off, there's a little keyway in there and it could possibly fall out. Pretty solid. Now we're taking off the front counterweight and the keyway. Okay, now that we pulled the front counterweight up, here's your thrush washer bearings. Check these out, inspect them. In this case, since uh, I did notice earlier that somebody's gone through this engine, these look brand new. We're going to take the oil pump off to inspect it as well. I 
Now you pull this up. You gotta be careful because sometimes the pump gear come out. What you're looking for is gouges or or scratches. From the outside, this looks pretty good. Um, during the rebuild, we're obviously going to tear it down and inspect it, inspect everything, and check it as well. Make now we're going to flip the engine over and do the backside. All right. Now we flipped it over. Flywheel side is up. This is the flywheel nut. You can use a air impact to take this off. It requires a 54 millimeter socket. Um, but in this case, if, if you're a badass rotary builder or a badass rotary driver, you got the muscles in your hand from doing all the stick shifting, from beating all those V8s and and whatnots. Um, you should be able to get this off with your fingers. If you're, you know, if you can't, then you're not beating enough V8s. You will need a rubber mallet to hit on the points on the outside. Please keep it to the flywheel, not the starter ring. Do not hit this. You will push it down and you will offset the whole gear and it, it'll it be bad. Um, like, like stated before, if you're beating FV8s, you don't need no hammer because you've got like the arms of Thor and you can do that. I fucking hate you so much. Okay, now when you take this off, what you're looking for is you're looking for this wear ring from the seal. In our case, you can see it, but our fingernails can't catch it. It seems to be pretty, pretty usable. I think we can reuse this. Get some emery cloth and, and get this rust off the surface. Help that seal out. Now it's time to take out the tension bolts. These are 17 millimeters. Um, you could use an air pack, take them off. Um, in our case, we broke them loose with a ratchet first, and then we are taking them out with an electric 3 8 impact. Okay, as we're taking them out, I'm gonna show you guys this. There's a tension bolt with the M on it. Now this bolt, is a specific length for a certain spot. And it's down here in the left corner. Go on. Now let's remove the rear housing. Now you take the rear housing off. What you're looking for is step wear. Make sure it doesn't catch your fingernail. You're also looking at your bearings. Try to get the story or life of the engine before. Okay, upon tear down, I see that this engine is using Atkins solid corner seals. Side seals. Sometimes when the corner seal pulls, you'll pull the second piece of the apex seal. In our case, we're replacing all of these parts with new parts. These are your corner seal springs. Right now I'm pulling up the apex seal spring, the larger spring. Sometimes you'll pull out the apex seal with it. Now we're getting the side seal springs out.
And you're using a side seal to do that? Yes. Now we're gonna pop the rotor up here. Gotta be careful. The apex seals will come up with. What I usually do is I push them down as I bring the rotor up. Keep everything inside the chamber here. The else you're looking for is damage on the rotor. If you have any, in our case here, these rotors are in very, they seem to be in decent shape. Put this up, repeat the process of taking the side seals, side seal springs and corner seals out. Go down and this is a small apex seal spring. Apex seal. Sometimes you can tell what brand you got, they'll be etched. In this case, it's, I would assume it has Atkins solids. It either has a Mazda OEM two piece or Atkins Apex seals. Now it's time to remove the housing. What you're looking for is wear and damage in the housing. Doesn't look like, doesn't look too bad. I'll we'll have to clean them up to do a full inspection. Water jacket seals. This here is the dowel. Got four of these. Got two here. We got two up here. This location. Ours unfortunately came out with the housing. Okay, now that we're pulling the intermediate housing, um, the E shaft has to come out with it. It's best if you have an extra set of hands or a friend over to help you with this part. You can do it by yourself. It's just easier with two people. Now you want to, while I pull the housing up, you want to help balance and keep the E-shaft straight. Okay, now pull it up through. Or, I'll pull the housing up through. Got the housing. In this case, the dowel, just like the last housing, the dowel was seized at the top. It was also seized on this one. They didn't separate easy. So it's best to have a nice clean floor. So when stuff drops, you can pick it up. Um, at this point, if you're following us and you're seeing this, don't worry. Just make sure you pick everything up and, and put it all in a bag or a box. Um, if you're buying a rebuild kit, getting it all new, great. Because we are gonna go over a rebuild. We're gonna do in-depth detail of every single part. Obviously, how to rebuild it, spec everything, and get it get it going. So don't, don't stress right now that your parts fail. Just pick them up, put them in a baggie. We'll take care of you. Okay, now that we flip the rotor up, get all the parts. The motor has been gone through. 
Um, it's stock pork, um, bitch pork, but other than that, it seems to be pretty good. Not really any step wear. Rotors seem to be in really great shape. Um, still need to spec them and, and do all that as well. Bearings, all still pretty silver. Whitish looking, no copper showing. That's a plus as well. Um, we are replacing those. Pretty much, we're showing you everything. We're also gonna break down the parts, where to order them from, get the best deals. We're gonna go over that as well with the rebuild video. Um, so from here, it's pretty good. Next step or next video you may see is gonna be porting, cleaning, specking. Um, this engine is getting bridge ported as well, a full bridge. Okay. So stay tuned.